Hello, 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 hello. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Well, you hear a little music in the background on today. Yeah. It's talking about it's been a long time. Yeah. Because you've been waiting and waiting. I had four segments on waiting. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew mm. their strength. They shall mount up with wings of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. Come on. And they shall walk and not faint. Yes. Okay? Uh -huh. So I'm just letting you know the day is the day that he has made and we yes. shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Well, I have someone sitting in here with me today. I know he have his own show, but to God be the glory. Um, he's sitting in here with none other than Cecil Young. How you doing, Mr. Young? I'm doing good, Mr. Brown. Our Lord bless you this morning. <laughs> Continue to bless you. You're doing good? I'm working on all it. All right, all yeah. right. Well, we had a segment going on talking about waiting. A lot of people have been waiting on certain things. What are you waiting on today? I'm waiting on justice. Justice. Because we all deserve it. Well, you got justice this morning when you woke up. I thank God for some of you, and I thank God for <laughs> God allowing me to wake up because he had a message. Because when forward. he woke you up this morning, that was justice from the Lord. He said, I'm your prophet. Yeah. Go forward and spread the gospel. Yeah, well, all so right. All of those that right. in darkness and but need the light. He wants us to wait on him because he has great things coming yeah. for us, and no weapon formed against us shall not prosper. Mm -mm. And this is, this is him t telling us as we wait, there's a lot of things we may have to go through right. that we don't understand understand why we got to go through mm -hmm. but if you my old bishop said if you didn't go through it go through you wasn't gonna go You're not it's gonna twisted know. other words you got to go through in order to get through and so sometimes it's hardship mm -hmm. sometimes it's anger that's right sometimes it's malice mm -hmm. sometimes it's strife that's right. sometimes it's envy right. sometimes it's things that ain't like god but mm. we got to get through those things finances children acting up, husband and wife acting up, and things in the street is not right. I was listening to you um, over there when, uh, on your show when you was talking about that. Um, I'm just going to say this. I parked my car in front of my door, and I was waiting. And as I was waiting and everything, something happened. And when it happened, go So as we was waiting on God, things happened, and we had to wait and see what happened. And the Lord let me know without a shadow of a doubt that he would work it out okay. And I said, you know, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And so I'm just saying that um, he may have to, uh, my guest may have to step out just for a moment, but he'll All be right. right back. No, she took care of it already. Uh, I, I got to see my psychiatrist at, at, at 110. Dr. Wainick, my, my wife just told me that, Dr. <laughs> Wainick, don't forget your appointment for your son. Wainick, what Wainick? Dr. Wainick up in the North End, he's my psychiatrist, I've been seeing That's him. That's the son of old Dr. Wainick? Yes, yes, the son of old Dr. Wainick. Oh my God, look how long he waited. I've been seeing him for 17 years His now. mother was 98 years old before he she left that office. Oh yeah, ain't that something? And if you went in that office, let me tell you something, don't mean to change the subject, if you went in there, and something was wrong. She only took care of children. Mm -mm. But if the mother and father went in and, and she looked at them and she seen something, she would tell you to write it down. She wouldn't take care of it, All right. but she'd write it down. One of our nephews, and that's your blood family, okay. Teasley, mm -hmm. had a son. And they told Chris that that son would never be no good. Mm -mm -mm. And that um, they may as well put him in a home because mm -hmm. he was born with that head, a huge Water head, right? Him. And when they called Dr. Mack, Dr. Mack said her name Wayne Egg, too. Mm -hmm. They said, bring him to Connecticut, back to Connecticut because he's from Connecticut. And they brought him back from Greenville to Connecticut to see Dr. Wayne Egg. Yeah. And when Dr. Wayne Egg seen him, she said, I can't do the procedures or what you need to do. See, they that wait upon the Lord will get their answer. Right. Here they told him to put him in a home, uh -huh. never be no good. Mm -mm. And he wouldn't be normal. Mm -hmm. And when they brought him to Dr. Mack, Dr. Mack, what she done, she drew a, a symbol on a board and she said, listen, tell the doctor that I'm going to try to find something for you. Okay. You're going to grill a hole in the top of his head. Mm -hmm. You're going to put a, like a tube there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to put a plastic thing on his back with a, a, a container. To drain. And to drain. And she said in less than six months, his head be normal. Come on, ain't that something, huh? Sucked all that You should see him. Let me tell you something. Huh? He remind you of somebody, when you look at Jesus' pictures, when he was 12 years old, and mm -hmm. they show him, you know, yeah. um, 
That boy looked like he came from another world. Uh, uh, uh. And then when he got 19 years old, he got killed by walking. Got out of bed 3 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning in Greenville and, start, and decided to walk down the street. And, and a car came off. from nowhere and hit mm -hmm. him and took mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Ain't that so. But you know what I'm going to say, Cecil? So mm -hmm. We wait on the Lord. We don't understand why God gives us something. We hold on to it for a while. Then after a while, we lose that person, that person person going to be with the Lord because a lot of people be mad when someone get hurt in the street, someone get killed on the subway, someone get killed in a car. Look at all those people, eight people got killed the other day in Texas, you know in what I'm saying? In the car, right? Um, but but then look at what happened in Texas at the school. Mm -mm. The father, the son, and the wife turned down a little bit. They got killed. They got killed. And left one son. Mm -mm. Uh, left one son. Left one son. Good From that job. shooting of that young man last week. Mm -mm. So what I'm saying, if you read the Bible, the Lord didn't say what we're going to be when we left here. Yeah. So what people are angry when you shoot their child or kill their That's child. Right. That's right. They are. They're very, they very, are angry. very angry. They're very angry. And they not only that, they're they angry. They they're justice. angry when um, the person died natural. Mm -hmm. But God in the Bible, I can't find nowhere where it says you're going to know when you leave this world. Yeah, no, thank God we don't know because it would be something to be no, worried about. We because even Jesus over. don't even know the time that the dad mm -hmm. is going to make him crack the sky and come down here mm -mm. and pull his ones that save mm -mm. up with him mm -mm -mm. to reign a thousand years. Mm -mm -mm. We don't know. No. Only God knows. So I'm saying to everyone out there, so Cecil, how's your show coming along? Well, the show's coming along pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thank uh, Soundview for allowing me to come on here to talk about what I've been going through. And all I want is the people to be able to look at the evidence, not to agree with me because of me being Cecil. Right. It's about agreeing with justice. Right. Agreeing with right and wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, we come from a mighty long way. Right. And when you look at the fact that, that, that when it comes to First Amendment rights and struggles, we, we didn't, nobody gave that till we fought for the rights That's to have right. the That's justice right. that we've been offering and asking mm -hmm, for. Mm -hmm. And it troubled me when we got people in positions of authority that look like you and me, mm -hmm. that become judges and prosecutors and people with authority. Mm -hmm. And they use that authority not to help us, but to hinder us from getting the justice we deserve. That troubles me. And as an activist, as a community person who's been out there all my life for the last, I'm going to 73 now, I've been out mm -hmm. there since I was eight years old, shining at you, selling day old bread and helping out our folks in any kind of way I could. I mean, I was a hustler, I had to survive. Yeah. Cause you gotta remember that, uh, you know, I didn't graduate. I didn't go through the school system as most kids did. I met, spent all of my time in the courtroom and in the mm. closet and, the, wow. and in the principal's office. And, and, and that's why I really don't have the kind of degree in terms of being able to speak the kind of English language like folks who've been taught to speak mm -hmm, the English mm, language. Mm. So I speak the language that I know from the hood. Mm. And it's always been good to me mm -hmm. because uh, I've been able to do things that I never thought I would be able to do. Right, right. Even though I was told back then I would never be anything, I would never do anything. But I thank God for him allowing me to do so many things mm. that I've done. Remember, now I've been a city sheriff. I've been a community activist. I've worked for the housing authority for X amount of years, supervised overtime police detail mm -hmm. for five mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I had an office in Green Homes. Mm. I was a superintendent of P.T. Barnum, mm -hmm. uh, where I grew up at. And I became the assistant supervisor with all of the superintendents mm, in the project. Mm. Okay, so God has been good to me in hiding my handicaps. And the reason why is because I've been committed. You don't have no handicaps. I've been, well, it's a handicap to a degree, but it ain't <laughs> going to stop me. Because I know what God called me to right, do. Right. He says, speak truth to power. That's right. Expose the injustice that's been denied our people for years and years. Like Dr. King said, we shall overcome. You should. All right, well, God is good. I just want to say, Cecil being a person that... Um, he never gave me no trouble. Whatever I asked him, he did it. I'm telling you. He do good things. I'm telling you. On, on a, um, I do a festival every year, and he have a white truck that he fixed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's brown now. Part of brown and, and white. And we were talking about him yesterday. <laughs> because well, lately we ain't did the prayer march when we do the festival. And Cecil, I would tell him at the last minute, he didn't say, uh-uh, no, where she coming from? I don't know what he said behind my back, but in front of my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna in, front tell you of my, in, my, in front of my face, he didn't say nothing. <laughs> he said, okay, I'll be there, what time, what time? He'll come with his music and everything and his mic, and we will get on the back of the truck. Some of the kids, he put chairs up there so they could sit down. That's right, that's right. And inside, he had the, um, 
He had the uh, um, turntable for the music, mm -hmm. and we um, have the horn, and they be singing and going down the streets mm -hmm. of uh, Carroll Avenue, or he would go all the way up Newfield Avenue and back and forth. That's right. And then we would stop on the corners by the liquor store, the school, and we would come back down by in front of English Chapel Church, and we would pray mm. and pray. And all he, right. All right. he did all that for us every year, and all the people would march behind him, and the police car would be in front of him, and want to be behind the people, the last person in the back row. But I'm telling you, one time we hit the front page of the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. No, I didn't put on the real. But thank God for that too. <laughs> we hit the front page of the newspaper. Over 300 and something people marched. Yeah. And yeah, one of the guys yeah. is on a mic, mm -hmm. and he's hollering, "Oh, the car hit my foot." Uh uh. Yeah, he kept on marching. Did he? <laughs> He didn't worry about no. He wasn't worried about no pain at that time. About no injustice. No, no, he was just relieved. He was that praying pain, and he was marching. All right. And so those are the good days, and that's what one other other than Pastor Ella King Hartley. He was marching with the kids and keeping making sure they don't get on the middle of the street but stay okay. on the side that's like right. they march. But we had the street. That's right. And the cars had to get in the back of us. That's right. That's we right. had the street. You understand? And so um, Cecil been there a long time helping us. But this year, I'm going to tell you early, you guys will, September the 19th, <laughs> we're going to try. You don't have to have no truck. We just, <laughs> we I got a station wagon. We just use your, oh, yeah, we can just use the station wagon. Hash up the back. Right, right. <laughs> Put right. some of the kids in it. Let Bobby and them have that mic and do their thing, you know. I want to do that march this year, God's will. But we were talking about you yesterday, mm -hmm. and it was Mother's Day. Every day is Mother's Day. That's right. And to the ones that I did not say to last week, I asked God to bless you on the day. And we give a shout out to none other than Deacon Johnson. Hello, Deacon Johnson. Hope right. you're feeling well, doing well, you and Lady Johnson, Deacon Reed and Sister Reed. Also, we give a big shout out to Deacon Boyd, Lady Boyd, and uh, Mother Ethel. And not only that, Sister Brovain. A lot of different people that we know that God, Caesar got his song on talking about it's a change coming. It is. <laughs> well, you know, you got to tell it's, people it's, what's going on because it, sometimes they can miss it. It's we? a change coming. But I said, I'm rocking it wait, to wait on the Lord because he's been good to me. That's right. We got a breakthrough going to come through after all this, um, everything is over for the conference. I have a conference coming up this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to give a date or time because this air more than one time. Yeah, okay, okay. And so what it is, um, you can call me on 203-333-1124, and I'll tell you more about the conference that's coming up. Hope mm. you can make it there. Right. To God be the glory if you can't. Please pray for me, right. and please pray for CESA. Yeah, I need prayer because, let me tell you something. I mean, I haven't worked in 17 years. It took away everything I had. It took away my, my sheriff work, took away my city job, it took away my insurance. No, and don't God say and, and, No, they took away, but that's all right. God but still that's restored okay. me. He, he, you know something? I ain't been behind in no payments. I'm not behind in no taxes. I ain't not behind in no mortgage. Matter of fact, I'm not going to tell you the truth. My house is paid for. God paid for my house a long time ago. I, you know I, what I, mean? I already knew I mean, that. You know, so I mean, but I'm saying, I'm not bragging, but I'm saying for me to come from where I came from, P.T. Barnum, from the hood, not having all these above to work with to right. make things happen. I had what my mother couldn't have, but I, and the first time I had two houses back 30 years ago, and I said, Mama, come on, move in there out of PT at that time. She said, I ain't going over no. Because <laughs> she was used to that heating hot and running, running water in PT. And thank God she didn't come because I lost the two houses back then because I didn't know no better. But now I got a house that's paid for. My well, daughter's going to be able to be comfortable for the rest of her life. Well, don't feel bad. To don't work feel bad. I, 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 don't feel bad. My family decided they want to take me to court and take my mom's house. Ain't that so? But you know what? You were talking about injustice, but I waited. And I just went through what they went through. My dad left a lot of money. Mm -mm. And I was so naive and so silly. Mm -mm. What I decided to do, my grandmother couldn't stand me mm -mm -mm. in her own way because I was nine or 10 years old. And I heard her in the closet saying, that's not your child. Yeah, and that affected you. That's, that's not that, your that, child. That, that, that and see you. what I say about people, I get sick and tired and sick and tired of people talking about Prejudice. That's right. That's right. Prejudice starts in your own yeah, that's house. That's right. In your own mind. That's and right. That's own, right. No, not my mind. Well, in well, my house. Somebody feeding you that yeah. kind of prejudice. My grandmother know? said, "Well, look at her complexion. Don't that's matter. not your child." That's right. And I'm like, in the color that she said, mm -mm -mm. I'm trying to figure out why would she say that about me? Yeah. You yeah. know what that? What do that yeah. mean? Yeah. When I look at my hair, my hair is black. Mm -hmm. 
But why would she say my face? My face ain't nowhere to look like them curtains over there. <laughs> no, you are black, but you ain't black, black, black. Like the no, black I'm man, not neither you? one. But ain't nothing wrong with that being my black, My name black. Gloria. And my it, name Gloria. And it, and I don't accept that. No, no, you don't have to accept that because, I mean, the bottom line is that whether you light-skinned, dark-skinned, the bottom line, you're an American. But you, you, have a, you, you have a right to... To feel the way you but when I feel. grew up, I tried to love her, mm -hmm. and I did love her. But guys. it was hard. It was hard with but that hearing that. This is why I messed up at <laughs> <laughs> when my dad, when my dad passed away in August, nineteen eighty-two. Okay. Before he passed away, he had a birthday party. See, we have to wait on things, and he said he stopped the music that day. He had cooked a, a what you call it thing. A, they call it a pig, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. It's about half long as this table, mm -mm. and they had about four men carrying it with the legs up in the air like mm -mm -mm. this. And he cut it up in many pieces. They made many different dishes yeah, out yeah, of it. Yeah. He had the street with all the macaroni and cheese, you name it, blah, Everybody. blah, blah. Mm -mm. And so I, um, I said, well, Dad, I'm not coming down there on the 4th. I got to go to a wedding with Maurice. I come on the 5th. Okay. And so I got there. The man had surprised me, a cake from here to there. And he stopped the music. Mm -hmm. And he said, if I die the day or tomorrow, my daughter don't have to kiss up to nobody. That's right, that's right. All my granddaughters. That's right. And that's what happened right. is that my grandmother disliked me when I was young. And so all this money that came in from my dad went to my dad's job. Mm -hmm. And the man said he loved you so much, Gloria, because I was the only girl yeah, with two yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah. But he only raised my brother and myself, my okay. older brother next to me. And me with my silly self wasn't thinking. I should have told the man, when the money come in, call me. Yeah. So you'd be my right grandmother there. and my aunt and all of them was with me. And I told him, I said, well, call my grandmother. That's my mistake. I yeah, made. she put a block call on you. Call my grandmother. Huh? She Let threw me that center block and on And that you. woman came up there. Mm -hmm. When she called her, my daughter, I left my daughter to help her. Because mm -hmm. she was living in the South. Mm -hmm. And she decided to move to New Jersey in my dad's house with my mm -hmm. dad. And, the, and his boss said, well, how much money do you need, Gloria? I said, I'm fine. I just mm -hmm. bought a brand new LeBaron car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still yeah, smell yeah, the leather, yeah, leather, yeah, leather yeah. in it. Le leather. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I said, just give her $500. Okay. He did. Now, my dad paid into his pension. Mm -hmm. He had over $50,000 in his policies. Mm. And, I, and he had stocks and bonds like this. Mm -mm -mm. I lost them in Connecticut up there in the... Mount Trashmore, yeah, whatever you Mount huh? you call it. Yeah, yeah. And they was accidentally put in there with a suitcase. Come on, man, huh? But waiting on God, that woman called my aunt, my daughter, told my daughter, call your mother, tell her to come. I got $3,000. I said, $3,000? Out of all that money that they What had? I'm going to do with $3,000? I got three brothers. Yeah, yeah. Two brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't do nothing. Still waiting on God to help mm -mm, me to mm -mm. love her. Yeah, yeah. And that time come, I went and led her through the sinner's prayer. Mm -mm, mm -mm. When I packed up to go back, I said, Nana, where's my money? <laughs> she thought you forgot about it. Yeah. She thought you forgot my about it. My dad had two mink coats. Uh uh. Over four or five thousand dollars. You kidding, huh? He had, had, blue, like he had the blue. Yeah. What, the playing? suede running down. What, what kind of business are you in? <laughs> he worked for a place like the Compellent Place. Okay. Like okay. Sikorsky. Yeah, okay. When the place but in Mo and Mom, what do you call it? Mohawk, New Jersey, they made the propellers. Okay. And the steel for everything. He making good money. He making good oh, money. Yeah, he making good money. Good money. Good so benefits. anyway, she gave me the $3,000, but when time to take her to the center spread, years later, she wound up in the bed six. She wasn't able to spend a lot. She gave. Mm -mm. My gr her niece, that girl is not related to me a lot. Yeah. So I said, Nana, where's my money when I left? And she says, behind, behind the dresser. Uh -uh. So three days it. later, I packed up to go back down and take care of it. And all of a sudden, I get a phone call before I get to the train. And they say, your grandmother just passed. When I got down there, there wasn't no money, no money to be man, found. Huh? Come on, man, huh? I was waiting on the Lord. Uh, 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 uh. I couldn't scream. I couldn't yeah, holler. Yeah. God had me where I couldn't. Once he saved me, I couldn't do nothing to nobody mm -mm -mm. that I could have did before he saved me. Mm -mm -mm. So that's why I said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And he gave me a love for people mm -hmm. that I could have hated and beat up. And hide it the way they made you that. feel. And hide it the way they treated you. when he saved my soul that mm -hmm. day on September the 18th, I felt something I ain't never felt in my life. Forgiving, forgiving them. Forgiving for the, is almost like he the way that they washed you, me, how they cleansed ignored me, you and, and he made me mm, love everybody who had mm, harmed mm, me and mm, hurted mm, me. And hide so, them. So mm. that's why I say, God got the injustice of them. That's right. Now, make a long story short, my grandmother 
cussed my, she didn't cuss my brother. She told him, she called the cop and said he was stealing from her. Mm -hmm. I said, well, this is my daddy's house. Mm -hmm. And I gave everything to my brother. The car, what I'm going to do with the car? I got a new car. I gave it to my brother, JJ. And do you know, she called the cops. I said, you're going to regret that. Mm -mm. And she wound up in the bed a month later, never got out of that bed Ain't for that five huh? years. Ain't that something, huh? And then my aunt and my mother left a beautiful house. Mm -mm. Just like you said, two houses yeah. that went out of my hand. Mm -mm -mm. She left a beautiful house and down. you deserved that. And she took me Be to a court. Part of that. I rode the bus all night long. Mm -mm -mm. Injustice. My injustice is love towards her. All right. Got to court. That woman hit the gavel. You from here? No. Hmm. She said, well, okay, let me tell you something. You go back to Connecticut. You got 30 days. My mother built the house, four fingers and three fingers off the ground. And when you do that, they can put clamps and wrap a real house mm -hmm. and move it. Okay. She said, I'll give you 30 days. And if you ain't moved in 30 days, I'll take it. Mm -mm. And they, that's what I said, do what you want to do. What yeah, I'm going to do with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they took it. Yeah, Brand yeah, new. Yeah, ain't that something My else. mother only lived in Shame. a room this big. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. All her life mostly. And they took that whole big house. <laughs> Three bedrooms, living mm -mm -mm. room, everything. Washroom, you name it. And I said, Mom, you old as you, what are you doing with a jacuzzi in your bedroom? Well, she would rather get enjoy some comfort if <laughs> the bubbles were flying around her body and give her some kind of release of that pain that was affecting her body. She had a his yeah. and her shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She oh, had no, his and her sink mm -mm. and a shower and a jacuzzi in her bedroom. She had it going on. And then I waited on the Lord mm -hmm. while he was renewing my strength. All right. <laughs> <laughs> did he ever do it? And then my he did aunt, it. He my, did it. He my did aunt it. got sick. All right. And they found out that something was wrong with her body. And she asked me what to do. I didn't want to get involved. Mm -mm. I knew what God was going to do. I said, go and talk to your pastor. All right. Whatever your pastor say, do it. All right. He told her, go do the surgery. She refused. Mm -hmm. And she died later. You're kidding, huh? Uh -uh. And then um, the next thing happened to me is that someone gave me a house right here in Connecticut. Yeah. Two family new. house. Oh, I thought about the one that you got now. No, they, they, you had another no. one before that. Two family. Uh -uh. And the peoples in the community just got on my last nerve. Yeah. They didn't want to see me have nothing. Mm -mm. I went back and gave the keys to the lady. That much misery is on the block. Draining the life. Out I of gave you. them back to I, I couldn't handle them. Yeah, it wasn't worth and the so aggravation. I waited on the Lord. And then all of a sudden somebody put a knock on my door one day. Mm -mm. And my kid the kids next door did something. I didn't hate them. I loved yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. And God bless. Mm -hmm. So you see the injustice by me waiting on God and praying to he God. He restored you he, for what they took from you. And he took everything. He says in Joel, whatever the canker worm and mm -hmm. the caterpillar mm -hmm. and the grasshopper mm -hmm. have stolen from you. All right. So now you're saying you did all these jobs and the city got on you and took That's from right. you. That's right. And other people took your uh, pension, not your pension, but certain things from yeah. you. Yeah. And then someone else. But he says... Whatever the caterpillar, the grasshopper, all those things taken from you, Caesar, they're going to be restored back to you. Yeah. And okay. your injustice first, if you don't forgive, if I don't forgive this, yeah. I'm saying this is a human being, if I don't forgive it, ain't nothing going to happen. Once you can put in your heart that you'll forgive yeah. all them naysayers the and me. the people that did to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. my God, the well, floodgates will open well, you know, my Shonda. Well, you know, when you think about it, that's why God continued to bless me. That's why he secured me because he knew that this was going to happen. And that's why he made sure that I wouldn't have to worry about my kids being taken care of, worried about me right. losing my house, worried about me not being able to pay my taxes. Right. Out of 17 years, like I said, I ain't been able to work. I mean, I got a back brace on. Look at my back brace on. For free speech speaking out, I got to wear a back brace yeah. for speaking out, free speech. I mean, but, but God still took care of me in hide of all of what they did to me. Mm. And I have no problem with it. And I forgive those of them that did what they did to me. But sometimes when you forgive them, you can't talk about it. You got to move on. Talk but I ain't going to forget it. <laughs> and, oh, wait, and, wait, wait, and, wait. and I'm, I'm going to seek justice sooner or later. Wait, I mean, you know. It's not forgiving. You got to forget it, too. Well, I ain't going to forget nothing. I, ain't gonna, I, I can't forget. I, no. I, I, I forgive, but I ain't going to forget. You got to forget. But I, but I forgive them. Every now and then when you're doing a speech out in public, <laughs> you can bring it up. But don't be talking about it every day. <laughs> Nice. Well, like I said, I forgive them, but I want people need because to know the story. God, let, know the God lets us know in the Word. If you wash your car on Sunday, and you know you're supposed to be in a church on Sunday, then your car is your God. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So when you talk, you talk about everything that you don't forgot. Mm -hmm. That I be talking about certain things too to let the people out there know yeah. that you know trouble don't last always. That's right. 
that's that's the reason why I be talking about it. But when I get home, I don't want to hear no more about it. No, nah, no, nah, you want to let it go. You know, when that's my wife tell me, she says, let, let, right. let God take care of you and these problems. And that's what I'm going to do. I, I said, you know something? I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired yeah. of arguing. I said, uh, all I want to do is get justice for my unjust termination, and I'm finished. I'm not going to complain well, God no will more. Give you the I'm not going to nag nobody no more. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about anybody no more. I mean, I know good people. I know bad people. I'm not no cop. I'm not no right, rat. Right. I'm not all the above. I'm an activist who's tired, and I need some rest, and I need some enjoyment. I never had no vacation in my life. I never Until the one you just took that mansion down there in Florida. Well, no, well, that was for a hot minute. That was my new wife took me out of town. That's the first time I've been out of town, you know, uh -huh. basically the second time. How many rooms that house had in it? Well, they had about seven or five different rooms. All of us came down there together, the group, and, yeah. and down there in Florida, and we enjoyed the life of Raleigh for a few minutes. And that was something new to me because I was not accustomed to leave in Bridgeport. Right, right, right. I've been working two or three jobs all my life, so right. uh, I couldn't really leave because I was doing what I liked doing. Well, that means it's time for a change, me. and that was your I said, I'm ready time to sit down. I'm tired. Change. I'm tired. I'm ready to sit down. I'm tired. I need, I need some peace. I but need once to enjoy you, myself. Once you forgive those people and forget it, I guarantee you, thus said the Lord, I'm speaking <laughs> in your life, that somebody going, Mr. Cecil, can I talk to you? And you're going to like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Well, I might have been from Washington Post or yeah, yeah. Uh, Connecticut, uh, New York Post. All right. I want to do a story on you. And then all you're going to say, well, wait a minute, what's in it for me? Yeah. And they're right. going to say, don't be like me. Mm -hmm. I've been around the world, and I don't hate them. That's right. I've been around the world maybe a million times now. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's 15 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Add that up. If, if they had a gave me the day I met them, Five million dollars. Mm -mm. Do you know how much in six months how much money drops? Two hundred and fifty million. Six months it'll been two down to hundred and fifty million. Mm -mm. Right now today it'll been almost a million. Mm -mm. Every day it's like you're selling medicine, a pot and pain, residual. Mm. So when they knock on your door again. They're going to be wanting to do a story on you. Well, I'm ready for it because I got a story to tell them. And I hope, <laughs> you hope they, they go to Soundview and get it off of YouTube because I've been trying to get it out to y'all because I need some help. I need a lawyer. I need some people with some authority to help me deal with these people that have been violating my rights because I know it can be done. All right, then. Well, we're getting ready to go off and everything. And I think what you need to do is go see attorney Costco, Costco, 350 uh, Main Street. Father, we thank you for uh, our prayer. We thank you for Cecil. We thank you that we calmed down a little bit in here because we, <laughs> we could have been. I didn't know. I was, I didn't but know. may God bless us and may God bless the studio. May he bless everyone at the sound of my voice. And as we say at the end of the show, shalom, shalom. shalom. Peace. All right.